Welcome back, everyone, to episode 37 of the Hops and Bops podcast. It's producer Tom and I have found with me, Joe and Mike. How are you guys doing? Good. Howdy. It's been a little bit. It has. We're back. And well, you're not for the listeners, but for 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 other people, it's been how many weeks? At least like at least a month. Yeah, one, somewhere in there, that, right? Because yeah. we, we try and do like every two weeks. Yeah, we just got really lost. The GPS took us <laughs> a little weird. <laughs> we drove into the lake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we finally got out. Yeah. But um, you know, we're we're back, and uh, we got a we got some really good ones. We've got um, this is Joe's album and Mike Spear. We have Train of Thought by Dream Theater. Yes. And uh, to pair with that, we We've have almost been waiting. As long as we have been gone <laughs> for this album. <laughs> it has been pushed back a little bit. Um, <laughs> and I do love that you send out the text saying, last minute you change it again. And hey, Tom, guys, sorry. And Tom's like, okay, what is it? And I'm I know. Like, no, what, I was being, pretty mad, actually. I mean, what a good I'm sport. like, he's being an asshole because I said to him, you weren't going to make it. We're not going to end up doing it. I was like, oh, God, all right. What are we changing it to? I just finished it. I was like, I, I'm going to wait till the last dying second to, to pull this joke. <laughs> that was pretty. I, I got pumped, so thanks. Um, but uh, to pair with that, we have The Harvester by Abomination. Um, yes. I've heard a lot of good things about Abomination. Um, my uh, The guy that I work next to, mm-hmm. he has a, a liquor store there. He always brings up Abomination. So Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I've had other beers by them, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. But I just, honestly, I saw the can, and the can just looked really, really cool. And I don't know why sours recently have been like the new thing. Like breweries are making a ton of them. I'm seeing them like literally sections of the package stores, like mm-hmm. strictly just sours. Yeah. Um, and I've been getting really into them. Like every time I go to the package store, I get at least a four pack of a sour, mm. and I try to get something different, like just to keep changing it up. D- yeah. Did uh, was this a uh, Packy Pat recommendation? It was not actually. <laughs> no. um, I went to a completely <laughs> different package store. Yeah. What? Yeah. Not I did. Damn. Um, wow. I'm trying to remember. Oh, he's not listening. I, 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 I did. I'll save your skin. I'll cut it. Um, I think I just went. <laughs> I just went there to try like see if they had anything different. Uh huh. Um, and yeah, I saw this. It's fucking expensive. Eighteen ninety nine for a four pack. Oof. Yeah. That's um, rough, man. That's the brewery life. Sheesh. Seven point one percent. Did you just sheesh on the episode? I just sheeshed. Mm. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Seven point one percent, which is pretty solid for a sour. Yeah. You know, I mean, you expect kind of them to be farther, closer to like the 4 or 5 range. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> apparently it's a rotating series, too. Okay. So we have the okay. Sour Ale with Mango, Steam, Dragon Fruit, yeah. and Peach. Yeah, I like all those flavors. Yeah. So. It's, it's, I don't know what a Mango Steam is. Yeah, I never. I don't know about like the Steam. Well, then how do, you, how do you know? Oh, I see Mango. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Uh, anyway. Let's, yeah. uh, a- abomination. So Let's crack it. Pop them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at that. Smells okay. Like, Smells good. like a mango yeah. sour. A bit on the fruitier side, yeah. yeah. Ooh, look Ooh, at that. Look, look at that, that pretty pink color. Yeah, it's like a label. I've never poured it in a glass. That's, that's a good. Would you like me to pour your glass, Michael, as you're texting? I was nice. Are you texting the group text? No. Oh, I haven't heard no, from no, you in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my, uh, my my music all lined up. Good at it, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Good to go. um, it's all right. Got, yeah, I haven't poured it in a glass yet, so it's the first time. Yeah, um, cool. I do like that cloudy. Yeah. It almost separates, like a little bit darker at the mm-hmm. top than the bottom. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, um, I can see that a little bit. That's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta spin it a little bit. <laughs> Definitely. You can you can almost smell that it's a sour that's too. Pretty good. Yeah, it's a very that's very really good. Yeah, I told you. Smooth. There's like another. There's like a second taste that hits you. Yeah, I gotta rinse the coffee out of my mouth with it. Yeah, at first, toothpaste but... again. Still. Ooh. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, you get the sour. Ooh, wow. I get you get a bit of mango in there. Nothing's like overpowering. There's no aftertaste. Like there's no linger whatsoever. Yeah, the peach yeah. clean. I think the this peach comes in at the end a little bit. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I've never had a dragon fruit, so I don't know what a dragon fruit tastes like. There's, um, I think it's just more complimentary than anything. Mm-hmm. But the brewery we did earlier in our uh, in our career, uh, Fat Orange Cat, yes. they they released their own seltzer, and one of the flavors in it is dragon fruit. Oh, okay, good. nice. Um, yeah, that's good. I, I want to maybe do that over the summer. Sure. But, um, yeah, this is great, and it doesn't have the uh, sour throw-up taste. No, no not really. Like a, 
This is like ocean spray juice. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> good shit. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I hadn't really. I mean, I haven't looked for it anywhere else. Mm-hmm. I only saw it at the one place. But Abomination's pretty well known, you know, especially around Connecticut. So yeah. I'm sure it's yeah out there. And, and I, I don't. I don't think they actually have a brewery. I think they. That's what you were saying. Before, yeah, yeah, they're, they're kind of just like independent and uh, like home brew. Mm-hmm. But they also they are distributed by twelve percent mm-hmm. um, North Haven, and then um, they also what am I saying? <laughs> they also collab, uh, collab with other yeah. breweries. Like I just saw them post; they did one with Tox. Tox is like a newer brewery. Oh, okay, okay. cool. Um, yeah, so they're they're kind of all over. Nice. Um, pretty cool concept, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of shows that you know maybe you don't need a big ass brewery to yeah stand out in the in the crowd I, I i'm safe to say at this point that this is currently my favorite sour yeah cool yeah it's very good i do like the flavor combination of it yeah yeah, yeah. It, it sounds strange but i mean because you don't know what half that shit is <laughs> you know but it's uh yeah it just works whatever they did with it it works Fruit forward. Yeah. Um, and a uh, cool little side note, I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, Doug, who used to be, who used to sell beer, now he's in liquor. But um, he was telling me, because these are so expensive, his suggestion is always look on the bottom, look at the can date, and if it's over 30 days, put it back. He's like, because yep. you'll realize that they start to lose some of their flavor, and they start to lose, like... They start to taste a little funky, and he was like, and you're spending $15, $16, 20 for four beers. This is yeah. close. We're good, right? February, or April. April. Oh, yeah, we're in May. Yeah, we're good. We're yep. I'm thinking of... So, no, I looked at it, and it was. It was, it was less than a month. Now. Yeah. You know, he said you could, some of them, like, you could push, like, some IPAs can get pushed to, like, maybe, you know, two months, yeah. a month and a half. He's like, but you start to see some of these that don't sell. And then they kind of get rotated. And mm-hmm. He goes, some of them can be like six months old. Mm-hmm. And he goes, they're just not, they're not worth the money at that point. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was pretty interesting to, you know, think about. Yeah, especially when they have these really fruity yeah. flavors. I mean, because I, what do we old. do? I walk in, I see a beer I like, I grab the four pack and I walk out. You just assume it's good. Yeah. Like I never would think to like, oh, let's look on the can dot. No. Yeah, yeah. Can There's date. not really like so. an expiration date. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, there is. But, but I guess, yeah, he's saying rule of thumb, if it's over 30 days, it's probably okay. not worth the money. Hmm. Yeah. This no, is fucking that's... good, man. I told you. This is really good. I enjoy this a lot. All and right. I think all their beers are like horror themed. Um, yeah, as so soon yeah, as I saw it, that was like yeah. what really yeah. pulled me in. Just the, the can and their, yeah, let me... looks like they're in a, uh, they're in a, like a, like a farm, like a field. Yeah. I don't know if Something they're like, like uh, <clears throat> they're like cropping. Yeah. They're, unless they're yeah. trying to, unless they're burying somebody. Could be. So look up their that. Instagram says horror <laughs> art local weird beard brew. That or makes beer. sense why I like it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, it's fucked up. Yep, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's for me. Oh man! And then uh, yeah, collab uh, alert. Yeah. Uh, recently, they just posted three days ago with Tox Tox Brewing. They are out of New London. Um, okay. Mocha Somniac, Mocha Somniac, a mocha latte pastry stout, stout mm, only available at Tox. Damn! 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 So, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, like I said, I really, I was very happy with it. Oh, it was geez. completely bought just on a whim. Mm-hmm. And, and like we've talked, how big these breweries are with their selling points by their uh, can labels, like mm-hmm. their logos yeah. and their, their drawing, yeah. their artwork. Yep. Um, and that honestly is the first thing that connected. It's got the pink and the yellow. It kind of pops. It draws you, yeah. You know, and then you got the skulls and stuff. And I just was like, oh, this looks cool. So I started to read it and, you know. Yeah, and um, I'm just scrolling on their website here. I'll, I'll spin the uh, the laptop the around old, so you guys can oh, see. Yeah, look at that. Their artwork is so cool. That is, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, if you I'll, look at all these. That's the I, uh, uh, astronaut ice cream. Didn't yes, you have that one? Yeah, too? that's in the fridge over there, actually. We might do that for a future episode. Okay. 
but like look at all their really cool yeah. can lamp yeah, designs cool. and that's especially important too because you don't really know what a beer is going to taste like yeah yeah so you and need so something to grab your attention it definitely is is definitely judging a book by its cover one one thing i do like i'm scrolling through and i'm on their instagram looks like they have a line called uh wandering into the fog yes that's the one that um my packy pet recommended okay. to me there's another harvester by the way yeah that's their fruited sour series i think is what they do so yeah. I, i'm assuming right. they just kind of throw Change different kinds of fruits in there and yeah then... and it looks like they're all like the same 7.1 percent yeah 16 like everything's the same it's just different flavors so we yeah. should definitely really cool maybe we can do like a uh an episode where we so get a bunch of them and, and like taste test taste test yeah, yeah. that'd be cool yeah that would be definitely cool. like really because cool i don't it's gonna be hard to beat. Yeah. yeah, this one's so good. Yep, this is very good. Good pick, Michael. Yes. Um, cool. All right, and now the long-awaited. <laughs> how how many times we put this off? A Tra- few times. Yeah. I don't know why. I just it, it just didn't pair well like at the time like the vibe we were feeling. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it is now time. Okay. It is now time to talk about one of my favorite albums of all time, uh, "Train of Thought" by Dream Theater. Uh, Dream Theater, they are a five-piece progressive metal band um, formed in New York. Um, I am a big fan of them. Not as big as, like, other, like, prog metalheads. Like, they, you know, they're, like... If you're a prog fan, you you know, like, every single, like, note and everything. Yeah. Like, everything. I mean, obviously, I know every song on this, but, like, you know, I, I'm not a prog metal, like... Yeah. Guy like I I listen to all, you know all types of music, but love these guys. Um, I I came across them through my drum teacher uh, Jeremy. Shout out by the way uh, when I took drum lessons. He he was big into them and I was starting to get more into drum set and uh, he showed me them and we started learning some songs for me to perform things like that and uh, yeah I got hooked. Um, we saw them on this tour um, and that was the first time I ever saw them. And that, that was a great concert, just seeing them just fucking crush every instrument. It was unreal. Um, I kind of refer to them as like Rush on steroids. You know? Okay. You know, so yeah, they're like a heavier version. Yeah, yeah, heavier version of Rush. I mean, they're well known for their complex time signatures and their mm-hmm. complex arrangements of songs and longer songs and con- you know concept songs, things like that. Um, they have a very wide discography. Um, every album during this era of the band had something different to bring to the table. Some were like mm-hmm. concept albums, some were more like on the proggy end, some were more on the melodic end, some were more on like the poppy end, like more mainstream songs. This album is just all balls to the wall, like heavy on the metal side. And that's yep. kind of what I prefer. I always gravitate more towards this album more than probably any other yeah it's really interesting when you look at it and like the track listings and all of that it's funny because their guitarist and their drummer write like all the lyrics yeah their singer in my opinion i said this to joe the other day the singer is the worst part of this band i think yeah that's fair he He isn't the best he doesn't really have anything special like all these guys are fantastic guitarists fantastic drummer yeah their arrangements and then this guy comes in singing and it's like I don't know, like a store brand freaking Vince Neil or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's kind of yeah. got a little higher voice, but it doesn't have a, you know. It's a bit nasally. Yeah, and there's yeah. no real, like, character to it. Like, yeah. there's nothing you yeah. can be like, oh, he does that well. It's like, I feel like you could put anybody with a voice similar like that. It wouldn't make a difference. He um, he was a lot better in, like, the earlier days. Yeah. He had a lot higher of a range. Nowadays, they have to really, like, overproduce his, his vocals. Yeah. And it doesn't sound as good anymore. Yeah, that, um, that happens with a lot of uh, yeah bands that have been uh, putting out music since what was it ninety two was their debut? I think so. Yeah, Something yeah, late nineties. Like um, I mean, uh, early nineties. Yeah, and it's yeah. funny too because like he's not even he doesn't you can't even say like he's the lyricist. I mean, yeah. he literally <laughs> is just a voice. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, I he's feel the like guy I don't that's know. there. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's a very so, strange like. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Well, yeah, so like Mike said, their chief songwriters were the guitarist, John John Petrucci, yep. and the drummer at the time, yeah. Mike Portnoy. He's no longer with the band, and when that happened, my, my heart broke. I was I remember I was in Crandall Hall at Eastern with yeah. you. I read on the computer, my jaw dropped. Like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he covered for uh, Avenged Sevenfold for a little yep. bit. Yeah, that was his kind of first gig right after Dream Theater. He filled in after Rev died. Yeah. Um, and then he 
He's always a side pro- project guy, so yeah, he has like a ton um, of bands going. Yeah, I remember he had one. Um, winery Dogs. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, Winery Dogs. Flying Colors, uh, Apo- uh, Sons of Apollo, which actually they're really good. Okay. Um, I remember when, when Winery Dogs yeah. put out an album. Yep. Li- uh, Liquid Tension Experiment, they're another side project. Yep, they just came right. out with another one. Um, that actually has the keyboardist and guitarist from Dream Theater in that band. So okay. That's been a big deal. He this was like the first time he played with them since gotcha. leaving the band, um, so that's that was cool. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so let's dig into it. Um, so it's their it's their seventh album released in two thousand three. Seven tracks. Um, they do a lot of symbolism. I feel like seven tracks, seventh album. They're big on that, like the numbers. A lot of that yeah. came from Mike Portnoy. His he's always into that kind of like mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Those themes, and um, I, I I like that too. Um, First track is As I Am. Mm-hmm. Um, this was probably the first song I would say I was exposed to by Dream Theater. And um, I like it. It's a great song. Um, I think it's the most like tangible song on the album. Yes. Okay. And it technically is the only single on the album. And it, it sounds like that. You know, it, mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. It, it's the shorter of the actual like big songs. Yeah. And you can, you know, you can chop out some of the solo in between and the musical break and make like a radio friendly song yeah. out of it I, I feel yeah. I thought the opening sounded a lot like a heavier Black Sabbath yeah yeah, like, yeah. That, like mm-hmm. I don't know just I, it sounded mm-hmm. like that style like Iron like, Man original like, yeah, yeah metal yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do like when it just comes in it just comes in hard the riffs on this album are just some of my favorites I love it fun fact Speaking of themes, um, do you guys remember that the sound that when it came in, it like faded in? It was like a kind of a keyboard chord. If you play the yeah. song, it, yeah. it, it like fades in, then yeah. the bass guitar hits. Oh, yeah. That sound is how the previous album ended. Uh, I love so the last track that. fades out with that sound, then this album comes in with that. Oh, that's cool. And they did that with like the, like f- I think, four albums during this time. So like if you play all four albums in a row, it sounds like one big yeah. album, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Um, yeah, they, they like connected all of them, which was pretty sweet. Um, That's cool. That, yeah, um, but yeah, I, I mean, the song had it's one of my you know favorite Dream Theater riffs um, in the verse. Pre-chorus showcases their odd time signatures. Um, I think it's a go-to song for them. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're just getting to them, I'll give you this song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a. Uh... It's probably one of my my, uh, my preferred songs on this. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, like you said, it is a bit more tangible. It's more, I would say, appeals more to the mainstream. Yeah. Because, you know, you get deeper into this album, you get so many different time signatures. Which I like yeah. different time signatures. Mm-hmm. I, it keeps it nice and fresh. Um, but I would say this is the, 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 the track that's the most uh, appealing to me, at least. Just yeah. As, has a pretty straightforward chorus. Mm-hmm. I think it's more suited for his range as a singer. Yeah. You know, he's not pushing as hard as he can. You know, he's right in that yeah. range. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's one of my favorites. One thing I always liked about this song was how reserved Mike Portnoy was on the drums. Like, everything's going on around him, but he's just keeping that, like, kind of yeah. ACDC, like, you know, simple groove during the verse. You know, he lets loose on the rest of the album, but um, I just, I always respected that. You know, he, he was like, this is what the song needs. I don't need to, you know, add double bass that matches the guitar riff all the time. No, he just did it at the end. Yeah. That, like, last literally yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. He's just riding out the double bass. Yeah. And it kind of gets a little bit crazy. Yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, from there, that song kind of rolls right into a song called This Dying Soul. Um, and another cool thing that I like about them is Mike Portnoy wrote... Um, a multi-song epic about the 12 steps of alcoholism because he's a recovering alcoholic. Mm -hmm. This is the second song in that suite. Um, Mm -hmm. And it covers steps four and five, I believe, Mm -hmm. of the 12 steps. And this lasted about like five albums. So this was kind of like a rolling theme and this song is the you know, the next entry into gotcha. that. Oh, that's pretty um, interesting. interesting. Yeah, so if you listen to all of those songs, you'll hear, like, similar riffs and callbacks. The last song kind of is, a, a like, a combination of everything. Yeah. It, it brings in, like, all these different riffs from all these different albums. So if you've been listening for years, you kind of yeah, appreciate that, like, that it all came back 
at the end. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's like an Easter egg. For exactly. Long time listeners. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Oh. Um, yeah. I mean, it's hard for me. Sometimes I can't. I'm gonna sound like a noob, but like, if I call out a song like one of the jam breaks, I don't know like what jam break belonged to what song because all of the songs had had them. You know. Gotcha. Yeah. For me, this is just a beginning to end album listener. Like, you know. I yeah. Love it. Um, but this song, I mean, odd time signatures, killer mm-hmm. solos, you know, great breaks, insane mus- musicianship. Um, yeah, I, another good one, too. This song is the start of uh, a part of the album. Well, not just a part of it, but where I consider this album to be a bit harder to review, in my opinion. Just because yes. it is so over the, uh, like all over the place where they have different sections that sound not really... Well, I mean, kind of similar, but not like very similar yeah and it, it's i don't want to say it's hard for me to like remember all of them but i mean you know that's kind of what i was saying you no, know? I, it's the first 10 minute or, or more yeah. than 10 minute track so it's hard to remember every single little detail right and especially when it comes to like you know favorites and least favorites you know mm-hmm. you're gonna say mm-hmm. oh well i liked three to six minutes of this song <laughs> but like not the rest right, you know yeah. so and, and, right. and the other thing too is like i stated before when you hear a song like 90% of the time you're remembering whether it's the lyrics or the vocal part or the chorus versus the verse and how it's sung. And with this being not very vocally prominent Mm -hmm. and all of that, sometimes it's hard. Like I couldn't tell you the chorus of like half the songs, you know what I mean? Because (laughs) yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like personally I got lost with this album a little bit. Yeah, me too. Like when we got into those seven minute jam breaks, like I kind of my my focus kind of shifted, yeah. and then all of a sudden something changed, and I'm like, wait, is this? I still don't even know is this the next song. Mm-hmm. I was actually listening to it, and when it ended, it went into more dream theater or that style of music because it just starts playing similar stuff, mm-hmm. and it took me like a few songs to realize like the album had ended because it was very similar like, yeah. kind of stuff, and I had never heard it before, so I didn't yeah. know what the last song was. Right. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's where like. I finally differ because I'm not a lyric guy. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a, okay. a singing I guy. Also, yeah. This I tune in because I'm listening to all the parts. I'm just yeah. taking it all in, mm-hmm. and like, yeah, sometimes I don't remember what musical mm-hmm. break was in what song, but once I hear it, I'm like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, this was. Great. I also mm-hmm. feel like too, um, if you've seen them live, yeah, you have a different appreciation mm-hmm. for the album. Does right. that make sense? Like, yep. I feel like. They sound awesome. Like, they probably put on a great live show. They do. When they do a seven-minute jam break live, mm-hmm. you're, like, sucked in. Yeah. It's really hard to get sucked in when you're listening to it in your right. AirPods. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just not the same right. feeling. And that's, right. that's where this album kind of just lost me a little bit. It was, like, it became a little too... Like, I, I was, like, dragging a little bit. Like, trying yeah. to... Almost trying to play catch up at some points. Like, wait a minute, what happened? <laughs> I wish I knew this album better when I saw them at yes. this time. Because mm, yeah, I would have gotten before. so much more out of it. But I kind of was just like, I was just, I just went. I knew yeah. a couple songs at that time and I just went and it was amazing. But I wish I knew like their songs in this album more because it was that tour. Um, so in hindsight, you know, I'd love to you know, have gone back and, mm-hmm. and seen them. But yeah, it That'd is what nice. it is. Um, yeah, but like Tom said, there's just a lot to unpack. There's a lot of un- like to yes, unpack yeah, these yeah. songs, you know. But if if you are appreciative of musicianship and song composition mm-hmm. and and the odd time signatures, I mean, you oh, yeah. you gotta check this out. Yeah, that's one thing I really do appreciate about this album is that um, it's not afraid to go from like just simple four mm-hmm. four into like a random like either exactly. breakdown or like five four or something or right. like seven eight. Yeah. And like so with some weird like halfway breakdown. So yep. they, they do a lot of experimentation. Well, probably not experimentation because I'm sure they've done it many times before. Yeah. Um, but it does keep it fresh a little bit. But I think I would have appreciated more if it had 14 tracks rather than 7 tracks. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So, yeah. so you can at least take in a bit more and f- kind of focus in on what each track has yeah. in it. Right, but, you right. Know, that's not to say that, you know, it has no merits. I think they do have a lot of artistic uh, abilities, and they are very, yeah. very talented musicians in their own right. So. I, I will say, I, I think this album has the most, like, long songs on it. Like, every song is long. Yeah. 
not every album has, you know, the the nine, the ten, the fourteen, the eleven. That's every track, you know. Yeah. So, but the style of music mm-hmm. is what draws me to it, not yeah. necessarily the song length. Mm-hmm. I was um, my my first uh, interaction with Dream Theater was in college. My roommate Ryan, for my birthday, got me a vinyl version of System- Systematic Chaos. Yes. And uh, I, I got through too. the I got through the With first the ants on the cover. Yeah, and the, yeah. the big overpass. Yeah. Yep. I listened to the first disc and I was like, yeah, I'm all right. So I felt really bad because it's a vinyl. I'm sure yeah. you like. I don't it's know if you got it from somewhere, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. That album is kind of where I started to kind of lose them. Yeah. They changed the record companies and they started becoming mm. something that they weren't. They all wore like the black leather and the singer grew out like a goatee and. Mm-hmm. The guitarist grew out his hair and beard. Like they became like the metal, the metal look. They took that on. Like that's not them. They're just five guys, and four of them are musical experts, and they're yeah. just playing. Then they took on this whole. Image. And then their buddy who didn't know what to do, so we let him sing. <laughs> yeah, right. He's actually the second singer. Uh, there was a first singer. Yeah, right. It took him out back. Um, their most recent album is called Distance Over Time. Um, I think it's like their fourth album with the new drummer. It's actually really good. They locked themselves up in like a, a cabin in like New Hampshire or Vermont or something. And like we've talked about on the podcast, like you could totally hear it. They're all in sync. It just every yeah. song kills. And I love when when bands do that. Um, mm-hmm. They they you know they kind of seclude themselves. But this is kind of where my love for Dream Theater is. This album. Mm-hmm. Uh, next song, Endless Sacrifice. I mean. Uh, it's just another. It, yeah, it's it a falls little, right in. A little bit chiller. Yeah, but then it's got still some punchy riff in it. Yep. Um, my my favorite part of the song was like six and a half minutes through. I know <laughs> I joked about that, but you you have this really really hard riff and it just comes in a little do 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 on the like, piano oh, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, I thought that was a really cool mix up. It really <laughs> caught me off guard on the first listen. I was like, oh shit! Yeah, they just had like this weird little like piano breakdown yeah they'll they'll add like little like classical kind of parts in, yeah, in they, there a lot did that somewhere else on the album yeah too. i forget which uh, song and, it was but. and that comes from like their berkeley days like they went to berkeley oh okay three of them did um mm. and i can see it it's just kind of one probably one of those like inside jokes for like music nerds you know they just mm-hmm. throw it in um but yeah like 450 just when you think the song is coming to an end this huge musical break just comes in um, they just show off their chops, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the keyboardist, Rudess, John Rude- um, Jordan, Jordan Rudess shines on this song. He, yep. His keyboard work is just amazing. Yeah, I think they did that also on The Dying Soul a couple times, mm-hmm. like right near the very end, like you think it's about to end. Yeah. And they, they come in with like another two minutes of music. Yeah. And they're like, all right. That's all right. their breakdown, yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like on this album how they trade solos. John Petrucci, the guitarist, and then Rudess, piano or on piano yeah. they trade solos back and forth and they're they're both amazing yeah um i love the next song dude the next song is fucking badass yeah honor thy father such a great song um the beginning it, the that drum fill i've tried to learn it i've watched videos i've watched him do it it is so fucking hard but oh, yeah. this song kills like they're they're so tight with one another and it just drives such a driving song um, yeah, it's one of my favorites on the album for sure. Yeah, it almost uh, rewards the like the music nerd that tries to uh, kind of find the rhythm at the very beginning. Yeah. It, yeah. it takes me just a little bit to like bob my head to yeah. it, right? And then you realize, oh, there it is, and you find the groove and you get into it. I, I really enjoy that one. Yep, exactly. Yeah, um, I did like how "Endless Sacrifice" kind of goes right into this. Mm-hmm. Like the big drum finish of Endless Sacrifice, then this song begins with the big drum. Like yep. I, I, I have always appreciated that. I just love that running rip. Yeah. Yeah. That's their, yeah. that's their really proggy side. Yeah. 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 Which I'm not really into that, but this just this one really punches. Yeah. I really like this. Tune. And it's just heavy. It's just yeah. the the tone that he tone. got on the guitar is just heavy, and I love it. And mm-hmm. clean though. It, yeah, like like it's not overly distorted, but it yep. punches. If you watch these guys record, like they, they do a lot of like behind the scenes and and stuff. Just watching him play is just so effortless. Like he, yeah. he just sits there and just does this. Yep, <laughs> and it's just amazing. Like 
it, it's so crazy how good they are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the song. So apparently, he Portnoy wrote the song about his stepfather and how I guess he hated him. Okay. Because I was always confused. It's Honor Thy far, Father, so I, I always thought it was about his father. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. on a later album, he wrote like a tribute song to his father, like, you know, all the good mm-hmm. times and stuff like that. So I'm like, but yeah, wait, yeah. didn't you call him out? Like, mm-hmm. So it's his stepfather. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and I always loved in the choruses, the vocals got a little more like cruder each time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, how could you blame this mess on me? Then lit, next verse he says like, or next chorus, he says, like, how could you blame this shit on me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You're <laughs> fucking blind to the damage that I see yeah, or something yeah. like that. It's just funny yeah. how it, like, climbs each, throughout each the time. song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite Dream Theater songs. I love this one. And, and vocally, they throw some effects in there that, mm-hmm. yeah. in my opinion, make them sound a little, that sound better and, like, yeah. a little more, fits the song better than yeah, having, yeah. like, that just kind of bland, empty voice, yeah. you know? Um, and pour some more harvester here. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. They do draw a lot from what's going on at the time. Their next album, they drew a lot from um, Octavarium Muse. Yeah, Octavarium. Oh, wow. There's a lot of like Muse um, mm-hmm. elements on there because Muse was like really big at that time. Yeah. In 2005. Yeah. Um, that's a good album. There's some songs that are a little too ballady for me. Um, but the last song in that album was a 24-minute epic called Octavarium. Yeah. And the cool thing about that album is there's eight songs. Each song is a different note, a different key in an octave. Oh, it's okay. It's just fucking awesome how they That's, just like, do that. Yeah, I like yeah. their concept. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, train of thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this song is just, uh, it just balls to the wall. The whole album is just relentless. It's a, it's just brutal. It's attack, but it's not like heavy metal, like screaming in your oh. face. Like you can really grasp onto it. You know, that's kind of where yep. I'm at with music. Um, cool. Anything else? No, for a long song, this was one I could like focus on. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like I got lost with the others, but this one, when I listened to this album through a couple of times, it just it stuck with me. Like, yeah, this was immediately the one song I was like, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'll be honest, like I said, I was a little lost and kind of trying to find my way when I was listening to it. So this one really just did stick out. I can I can definitely um, understand that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm. Next and song it goes right into the next one. No, vacant. Like, vacant. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a nice break because <laughs> no, ever yes. since the beginning of the album, yeah. it's just been bang, 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 like kick in the face. Yes. Yeah, I mean. This is uh, James Labrie, the singer. He he needs to have his little moments on every yeah. album. I'm not saying he's a diva, but you know. It, this well, is he's, his... I mean, we've said it. He's overshadowed a hundred percent. Yeah. On everything, so yeah. it makes sense that a little something. I mean, I don't know. The strings and everything, like it's it's a nice touch. It, it doesn't sound bad. I just yeah. again, if he had a voice where he could just like belt something out here. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of when we talked about Avatar and they had that song. I was song. literally yeah. just going to say that. Like, <laughs> the one thing was that vocally it just didn't work for him. It's not that he has, that's a bad voice. It just mm-hmm. didn't work vocally right. as well as it could have. Yeah. Right? And I just feel like you start singing, it's just very airy and kind of yeah. like, mm-hmm. there's just no substance to it. Like, Yeah, it is a bit on the lighter side. Um, I feel like he needs to just like, Bah! Yeah. But I don't think he can do that. And that's the thing. problem. Yeah. That's why this song doesn't work for me. Like, yeah, it's a waste I mean, of a song because I feel like this should be piano and vocal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like piano and. Eh. Well, I think he supplements a bit of that with the strings. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. I, I will say the mood of the song, how it's kind of darker, battle ballady, matches the rest of the album. Agreed. Perfectly, it, it complements the album because it's not like. A headbanging thrasher, but it also matches the the theme of it. It's dark, which and then the album cover is just all black with the yeah. tunnel and the crows flying. Like the they they really just captured everything and they 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 just have it all together. It's really cool. Yeah, um, and I think I don't know if you mentioned this on the Avatar episode, but it was very much a change of pace, which mm-hmm. I think 
granted an album that is this length probably can be used a bit yeah. of. It's just like a, all right, this is your album, just, you know, or this year your tracks, you know, take a breath, you know, yeah. Yeah. Ca- ca- uh, you know can regain your composure, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, get kicked in the ass with the stream of consciousness. <laughs> Last thing I'll say about this song is um, they recorded a 20th anniversary concert at Radio City Music Hall. Oh, okay. And at that time, Octavarium was out. And the next album, and um, they played a lot of Octavarium songs, but then they went through a whole like tour of songs, and they went album by album, and they showed like every album cover. Mm. This was the only song they played off Tr- Train of Thought. Vacant really was, and yeah. I was pissed because <laughs> I love that DVD. I, I it, it's a great concert, but this is my favorite album, and to have this be the song yeah. that represents it, maybe because it. At that time, Train of Thought, like they had, they had just finished the tour, oh, okay. so they're like, let's oh, yeah. rest those songs, mm-hmm. which I kind of understand, but to have this be the only song played was kind of a bummer. But then Stream of Consciousness. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, they flow well. Like, yeah. It flows well into Stream of Consciousness. Yeah. Stream, stream of Consciousness, Honor Thy Father, or uh, in, in the Name of God, sorry, honor, um, In the Name of God. It's like the one-two album closer, and I fucking love it. Um, Stream of Consciousness, all instrumental. It's the longest instrumental they've ever had on an album. No vocals. Um, like I mean, it, the five four in there. Yeah, it has everything a prog metal fan would want. You know, it, it's all instrumental first. It has all the time signatures. Has crazy sections, crazy transitions, great solos. Um, there's an insane guitar solo at three minutes fifty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you that up. Um, that's the way you said that. I know. That's, we that's, have to talk about the songs in minutes. Yeah, right. Yeah, that, that's one thing I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know. Yeah, this is a good one. I do like 5-4, though. I'm, I'm a big uh, fan of weird time signatures. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, this was, this was the other one where they kind of add, like, a another kind of... Not piano, but it sounds like something very similar to that. Yeah, around the around the three minute mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Where they 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 need that mix it with the chugging board guitar. With Charlie Day, like each song, like <laughs> it's it's the strings. Yeah, exactly. Like, at this part or this point. Yeah. <laughs> the box is full of Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched it. Yeah, uh, that's good. A good conversation though. Me and Joe had the other day, going back to their singer and all that. We were talking and. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen the social media like things where they give you like a one dollar row, a two dollar row, a five dollar oh, row, yeah. and you have to like make, make your, your thing with fifteen bucks or something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we basically said they spent all their money and then they went to the one dollar row for their singer. <laughs> <laughs> they, it was like the best way to describe yeah, it. <laughs> they had a twenty-one dollar budget. <laughs> Everyone else was five. Twenty dollars in the five row. And then, yeah. <laughs> I I don't think. I personally don't think he's that bad on this album as you guys might hear. I don't, and it's not even that I think he's bad though. Yeah. I just don't. Every musician in this band. Yeah. He's not like, a key contributor. Is standout. Yeah. And then he starts singing, and you're like, I just feel like he's very expendable. Like you could replace him with almost anybody, yeah. and it would still work. Nowadays, he can't hold it. It's it's bad. Like when you watch it live, it's bad. He mm-hmm. lost that high range. He looks bad. I mean, it's just. It's too bad. Like I don't know why I like I keep going back in my head to like, like you need someone like a metal version of like a Steven Tyler in this band. Like yeah. that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Someone that can just belt yeah. something out, but that yeah. can sing. And I don't know why he's been. Ever since I started listening to this, like yeah. he's been the one in my head. I'm going, someone like him who sings heavier would yeah. be like ideal for this band because yeah. he has that X factor, but he can also just sing if he needs to mm-hmm. sing. And I feel like that's where, like, with Vacant, that last, like, note he hits to ring out in the last part of his vocals is, like, uh... And I'm, like, that, that's it? Like, you're not gonna, like, you're not gonna go for anything? It was, yeah. like, so mid-range, I was just, like... Yeah. Wow. It, it's it's too bad because when Portnoy left, I think it was because he butted heads with James Labrie, the singer. Mike Portnoy, they were going on an album like right record tour, right record tour, just cycle. They were going at it. Mm-hmm. Portnoy wanted to take a break. Labrie wanted to keep going. And <laughs> so you knew he didn't have many good years left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Portnoy, one of the co-founders of the band, just you know, he came, his his father came up with the band name Dream Theater, 
he left. It, it sucks. I, I would have much rather them find a new singer than. I think they could have leave. I, they could have really found something if they got yeah. somebody that just had a little bit more balls. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really too bad because like Portnoy was the personality of the band. He was the social media guy. He was the the octave idea on Octavarium. It was like mm-hmm. he he was all those ideas to make the songs like speak more. Yeah, was all him, and then now he's gone. So the band really lost their personality. I, yeah. I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Stream of consciousness, I get lost. Like, it's funny how it's named yeah. that stream <laughs> of consciousness because you can kind of float away and come back in towards the end. Yep. And then it all comes to an end with a song called "In the Name of God," which, wow, I, this song to end it, it, oh my God, this is one of my favorite like album closers by them. It, you can hear it end the concert. It's 14 minutes. Yeah. I mean, you're, it's the longest one. It, it's a long song. But, and to end it. <laughs> yeah, and to end it. But oh my God, this song just kicks ass. And that calm guitar intro, like yep. you can feel something's coming, but you don't know what. Mm-hmm. And then it, boom, kicks in. Oh, it's great. Yeah, vocally, he expands a little bit more in this song. He gets mm-hmm. a little bit higher. He pushes a little bit more. Um, yeah. And it works. It's It's pretty much in line with the rest of their songs it's very it's good but it's very long and like i've mentioned before in other episodes i'm not in theory against long songs Mm -hmm. you know i mentioned in um uh the elton john episode that i liked uh that 11 minute song you know funeral for a friend to begin it right yeah i like uh even on some tracks on um uh, Tame Impala, they have, you know, songs up in the seven, eight minute range, and, uh, you know, you, like you mentioned before, Rush, they're very proggy, they have, yep. you know, 2112 is like 16 something minutes like that. <laughs> yeah. So, in theory, I'm not against a long song, but in practice on this, it, it does leave me, like Mike said, feeling a little bit lost. It got, mm-hmm. t- it got a little tiring. Yeah. It just got yeah. hard to listen to when, like, you know, you were, there. Yes, they had sections. Like, I know you say you have, like, sections of the song. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. there's three minutes, and then there's three minutes, and then there's three minutes. But they flow so well into one another that Mm -hmm. you don't get, like, that track break. Yeah. Where, like, you can... Something signifies that it's a different track. Right, yes. You know, you don't get that with the sections because they flow so smoothly, which is a good thing, but also kind of a... a, 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 I don't want to say a bad thing. Just makes, makes it hard to listen to. Um, Especially I, for someone who doesn't know the band well yeah, or and that's the other their thing. discography. I, yeah, I feel like, like you said, other albums have one or two long songs on mm-hmm. it. I feel like I just got overwhelmed with oh, essentially every song except the ballad right. being long. Right. And I was like, I made the joke when you said uh, you wanted to change albums, and I said it took me all week to listen to the first three songs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but at one point I did. I listened to the first three on like my prep period, and I ran out of time. Yeah. And then I had to start the album at like Honor Thy Father and like finish it. Right. You know because I couldn't start from the beginning again. It was I was like I got to move on and right. get to the end. And right, right, right. Try right. to relive. I don't think I listened honestly to this top to bottom at one time. Yeah. Each nope. time I listened yeah. to the entire album, I think twice. Right. But both it was like I but I did it in like four sections mm-hmm. because I just <laughs> was doing other things and I'd get lost in it and. It was just kind of a very jumpy thing for me. Mm-hmm. I, I respect the music and the fact that they're just unbelievable musicians. Mm-hmm. I did struggle with the vocalist. Uh, I'll be honest, he kind of ruined it for me. I yeah. just, just his, I don't know. He was just missing something and I couldn't quite mm-hmm. figure it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He wasn't as much of a, like a key contributor as the other members were. Yeah. And he got super kinda... overshadowed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it just, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it makes sense. It, listen, it's not yeah, for everyone. No. It, this, this kind of album isn't for well, like, everyone. Like we talked about with Rush. I've never been like a huge prog guy in general. Yeah. Like even with Rush, I, mm-hmm. I'll listen to Rush. I know their big songs like, and I do think they're good. I just, that was the first time I listened to a Rush album was for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, and it might be the last time unless we do <laughs> another one. It's just not my thing. So. Right, right. Um, yeah. It's just not for everyone. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> this is how I felt on the MF Doom episode. On which one? On the the, the food. Like oh yeah, you guys weren't huge fans, and I give the five. I'm yeah, like, Aw. but yeah. I mean, hey, that's that. It is what it is. You know, everyone. That, that's why we do this. Yeah, but they yeah. are super talented. though. Yes. that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, but when you 
put almost like five tracks into one song, right? It, it's a bit tough, especially for someone who has yeah. no exposure to them beforehand. Right. And that is my one knock on this album is every song is long, so it's hard to like distinguish between one or the other. They, yeah. they, there aren't those track breaks. Um, one last thing about um, uh, In the Name of God is at 14.05, if you jack up the volume, the like last seconds of the song, you hear one piano note. That one piano note then begins the next album. Oh, the gotcha. first track has that one note. Just a little shit like that I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that continuity that keeps it going yeah. into the next one. Yeah. Just listen and appreciate it. They're a great band. And like I said, this era of the band, like every album brought something to the table. So like if you more on the melodic side, like Octavarian might be for you. Um, if you like concept albums, two albums prior, um, me- uh, Scenes from a Memory, that was good too. Um, so maybe we'll do another one one day, but definitely check them out. Yeah, but I'll be in my like, three years. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just messing. Yep. Um, but this is kind of where I'm at with them, the heavier side. I like yeah. that. Cool. All right. Uh, key tracks? Tracks. Let's do it. Should I start? Sure, why not? Okay, so I have a tie for my two favorite. Okay. Uh, it's As I Am, the first track, mm-hmm. and then the last track, In the Name of God. I love both of these songs. As I Am was the first song I've ever really listened to by Dream Theater. Mm-hmm. In the th- Name of God, I just love how it ends the album. It has these ebbs and flows, and it just builds, and I love how it ends. It's just so grand and epic. Um, so those are my top two. Hmm. Um. If I'm going number one, mm-hmm. I'll probably go As I Am, just yeah. as a great way to start an album, and mm-hmm. it was a single, so I put it as, like, my number one. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a good track. You know, it started off pretty hard. You could get into it. You could see why, like you said, it was a single. You cut it up a little bit, you trim it down, and you could get that radio single out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to agree. As I Am is probably my number one. Cool. You know, my first uh, real big exposure to them. Yeah. Um, pretty much the same things you said. Um, I think his vocals are actually not super bad on the song. Yeah, I, mean, I think they are passable, but um, not not the best part of the song by a yeah. long shot. But you know, it, it builds very slowly, and I think they could have trimmed that down a little bit. But you know, it's very it's very throbbing and head banging. Mm-hmm. I, I can appreciate that. But it's very uh, yeah, appreciate uh, uh, works its way into uh, you know the average listener. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, it could be on the radio if you trim it up a bit. So. Yep. Yeah. How about your bottom track, Tom? Uh, I don't know. Because this one, yeah, like I mentioned before, it's harder to put like a favorite, least favorite, (laughs) because they're so long. It's like they're all like compilation tracks. If I had to choose one, I guess Vacant, just because it's the easiest to say it's the least. But I think it was important in its own way to be on the album, because... It, it, it is that change of pace and that kind of breather for listeners who mm-hmm. are getting a little caught up in everything, you know. But in terms of, you know, if you put it on shuffle and the song came on first, I'd be like, all right, you know, come on. So, right, right. Yeah, probably my least favorite. I, for the exact same reasons I said Bacon, too. Yeah. I don't hate the song. I yeah. like its purpose. I like its placement in the album. But as a standalone song, I don't, like, yeah. I don't dial it up. Yeah. And so, I, yeah. yeah, I remember listening to it too, and um, it just ended at like like less than three minutes. And going in, I was like, "Really? That was the end of the track?" <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, same thing. I mean, uh, <laughs> it, it could have been here. a much better song. I think. I think vocally it was weak. Which for a song like that, I feel like you had to vocally be strong. Like that was the yeah. point of it. It was a showcase. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and it just didn't have that. And yeah, again, just that missing piece that I couldn't quite. Yeah grasp on to yeah. um, now as for my sleepy dark horse mm-hmm. uh, honor thy father yeah which is best track on the on the entire album in my mm-hmm. opinion mm-hmm. but it wasn't your favorite well I, I, I steer clear of yeah, marking the as I am as, I am as a sleeper you right. know what I'm saying a lot that's of fair. Time, to be completely honest with you most times I pick a sleeper it's it is my favorite track mm-hmm. it's just that you know I put it as a sleeper yeah, it's because not it's not necessarily a single. Because like you can't call it as I am or any single a sleeper. Realistically, yeah, because yeah, it's it tough to do out that. there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times, honestly, I like some of the, I guess you could call it B sides mm-hmm. or kind of tracks people don't know better than, mm-hmm. you know, the singles. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm going to have to agree. Honor My Father is probably my sleeper. I don't think it's my favorite. I think As I Am is probably my favorite still, mm-hmm. but I really do like this. Um, again, you know, 10 minutes, but, you know, that's pretty much their kind of MO. But it's very, very much in the same vein as As I Am. Very head bobbing and throbbing, like I said before. Yeah. Um, so many different parts that play well with each other. Singers, you know, stand up, uh, you know, pretty solid. But, um, yeah, probably my, my sleeper. We're just all really locked <laughs> we up in this album. Wow. Honor Thy Father, Father is my uh, Sleepy Dark Horse, too. Uh, it's one of my favorite Dream Theater songs. Um, it could easily be called my favorite on the album, too. I, I love the drums in it. It's a drummer's delight. Mm. I can see um, that. Yeah, and it, it's just a brutal attack from beginning to end this song. It's a great song. Um, Honor Thy Father. Yep. Cool. cool. All right, let's rate it. All right. Me? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I was, I'm, I, I was stuck. Um, some days I give this a five. Some days I don't. Oh. Um, I think, I, I think I gotta be a little conservative. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Top yep. five albums of all time. Oh, Easy. Wow. Okay. Yes, it is. But I'm giving it a four and a half because of the lack of the song breaks, like the the track breaks. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I, w- I would have appreciated that a little bit more so you can distinguish song by song. Um, but, I mean, it, 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 I, I still love it. It's one of my favorite, al- yeah. favorite albums of all time. So I'll go four and a half for wow. me. Yeah. I'm going to go two and a half. Uh, just middle of the road for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't hate it. Didn't love it. Mm-hmm. Am I going to go and listen to it again? Mm, probably not. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like a dud for me like oh this was terrible like right. I respected yeah. the musicianship I respected the songwriting and the riffs they had and the solos and everything else um, you know but it's just not that prog metal kind just prog in general any of that it's just not my favorite type mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. music so I kind of you know got a little lost in it mm-hmm. okay I'm uh, pretty much along the same veins as Mike I'm sitting around two and a half um I really do appreciate the odd time signatures and the way that they keep things fresh. Um, I do enjoy prog music, um, but not necessarily prog metal. I'm a bit more into the newer style of metal where everything is very much screamy and up in your face because mm-hmm. that's just the kind of person I am, I guess. But um, uh, I don't know. It was just it, it was tough to keep my attention, and I feel bad because you seem to like this album a lot and. Don't feel bad though. I mean, we've <laughs> but all. I, I felt that I didn't before. Like Mike's uh, St. Paul album. You know, yeah, like yeah. We, we we struggled with um food because we didn't yeah, have exactly. like, a lot of context. On it. Yeah, that's why we do it. You know. Yeah, so can't give trophies to everyone. Dif- different strokes for different yeah, folks, I guess. Yeah. Um, I I would be interested because I I feel like I haven't really given them enough of a chance mm-hmm. because I don't, for just some reason so I would maybe would like to try Octavarium maybe yeah. some of their 90s stuff maybe their earlier yeah the material. 90s stuff sounds very 90s like the the production level yeah. it, it sounds and I, like yeah not like dirt and stuff like that and a bunch of 90s stuff so maybe but no be, they're more it, it's like more 80s like oh okay not glam metal but like that kind of sound like okay. the, the high synthy keyboards stuff like that like okay. this is a complete 180 from that okay. um so, like I said, like, everything kind of has something different to offer. Yeah, so. and I'm sure if you know more of their discography, you yeah. can tell, you know, which is your favorite. Yeah, I, off the I struggled choosing this as the Dream Theater album to bring. I almost went with one or two others. But knowing you guys, like, you know, you guys like the harder music, the mm-hmm. heavier music, I was like, oh, let's do it. It's one of my favorites, too. But, hey, oh, maybe I'll do another one down the road. I'll, I'll yeah, show yeah. you another, uh, another one. Cool. All right. Well, there you go. Very good. So, uh, shall we plug? No, we didn't write the Oh, the beer! The beer! I forgot. It's a little rusty. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm rusty. It's okay. It's okay. It happens. Okay. Uh, the Harvester. The yes. Domination <laughs> Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this is hands down my favorite sour. Um, it's just smooth. It has a great flavor. Um, no aftertaste. You get a little bit of all the different fruits that are in there. Um, not super sour. You can drink two or three of these and be good with it like you know sometimes with sours they can you got to move on you got to have something else um this is probably going to be it for me this is a five this is my first Ooh, five. wow there you yeah, go yeah this is and i know beer is tough because you know you're kind of getting a groove you know what i mean you're drinking something specific and yep. yeah. right now i'm on sours and of all the sours i've tried this is the best one yet wow 
Cool. Uh, we, nice. We, we, we found it. Yeah. Mike's finally got his fives. It's just yeah. nice. I don't, have we, I don't think we've given a beer five yet. I have get, I gave Baby Kittens a five. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. I, I, have not I think that's a perfect IPA. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the Harvester, I, I'm a little bit lesser than a five. Uh, I'm probably going to sit around three, three and a half. Yeah. Um, I'm not as much into sours right now, or just in general. Um, but I, for what it does bring, the uh, the very fruity textures, the mango steam. I don't know why it's steam, but mango. Um, it, it definitely does have that, that really cool um, flavor palette to it. It's got the different color. almost looks like a... Like a strawberry banana smoothie, almost. Yeah. Um, it, it does have less of the the throw up taste that the sours usually have, but it does still sit in there a bit for mm -hmm. me, so I can still taste it a bit. But in terms of uh, some of the sours we've had, even on the show, I would say it's it's definitely in uh, my top range of sours. So, yeah. cool. And Abomination is a really good brewery. I really want to go try more of their beers. Um, I'm giving this a four. Um, big nice. fan of it. It is a very, very good beer, a very good sour. Um, good pick, Mike. And I, I too, want to try more of their beers. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely want to look nice. out for more. Cool. Very nice. Yes. All right. Shout them out. So, yes. Now we shout them out. Um, Abomination Brewing Company. Instagram is Abomination Brewing Co. Um, again, very cool theme with the, the horror themes on all their beers. So yes. definitely check them out. And then we have uh, Dream Theater. Their Instagram is Dream Theater Official. Um, I guess Dream Theater was already taken. So <laughs> Dream Theater late to the game. Official. Yeah. <laughs> um, so check them out too. They're actually in the middle of um, writing and recording and producing their next album, which I think is their fifteenth album, sixteen something like that. Wow. So uh, I'll be looking forward to that because the previous one was a great one. Um, yeah. So there you go. Cool. Uh, next episode thirty eight. What do we uh, have? It's Mike's album. Yeah. What do you What do you do? Flowbot, fight with tools. Yes. Um, came out in two thousand seven. Um, very interesting album. Yeah. Just a lot of different things going on. A lot mm -hmm. of different things musically, lyrically, vocally. Mm -hmm. Um, just a cool change up. Yep. And then I am bringing uh, Dubage. It is a special release IPA Ooh. from uh, Bad Sons out of Derby, Connecticut. Oh wow! Some Valley beer. I haven't tried um, that one yet. So it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be a good one. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, that is that. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you have been enjoying all the episodes. Check them out if you haven't. If you're just joining us, Hops and Bob's podcast on Instagram and Facebook. We're streaming on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. For Mike and Tom, I've been Joe. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.